What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Inkscape tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk about some of the new features contained in Inkscape's newest release, Inkscape version 2.5. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so I think this release came out something like last week and I just want to walk you through some of the changes, maybe give you some opinions on how I feel about some of it, that kind of thing. So before we get started, model credit for this model that I downloaded from the 3D Warehouse is the Casa Moderna by Luis. So you can find this by searching for that in the 3D warehouse. Um, so this is an example model that I downloaded and I wanted to show you some of the changes that are contained in the new version of Inkscape. So the first thing I wanted to point out, and it's kind of a minor change, but they've added a couple different things in here. So they've added um, some new horizon presets in your atmosphere settings. So in your atmosphere settings, um, I think the forest preset may have stayed the same, um, but then they've also changed out, they've added a mountains view, which that one actually looks pretty cool in the background. Um, so they've added a mountains view over here, and then they've adjusted the construction side, I believe is a new, version of this so they've replaced the old version of the construction site you're probably not going to use that one too much um the town i think stayed the same and then the urban setting is a new setting as well so you can see how this urban setting um gives you more of kind of an open space with uh like a city behind it and things like that so minor change but they did change some of the presets in here for the horizon that you can now use um, so the next thing they added, and uh, I really like this feature, is they added the ability, when I fly inside this building, um, they've added the ability with your shadows to adjust the sharpness. And that's contained in your sky orb setting. You can see how when I use this slider, I can adjust if the edges of the shadows are... Um, I can adjust if the edges of the shadows are fuzzy or if they're really sharp. And I like this um, really, first of all, because I like tools where you can see a really demonstrable result when uh, you use them. So you can see how you can easily see the difference between the sharp shadows and the non-sharp shadows. You can really use that to kind of uh, adjust the look inside of your renderings to whatever you want it to be. So I like that setting. That's under the sky orb setting down below. So they've also made some changes to the video editor. So if I go to the Inkscape capturing toolbar and I click on the video editor, you can see how the way this tool works is a little bit different than it was before. So the way this works is it's based on keyframes. So like for example, if I wanted this to be a view that I wanted to render, I would click on the button for add keyframe. And then you would just go find another view that you wanted to contain in your video and you would add another keyframe. And then finally, you could add another keyframe just like this. And so th this is nice. They added a total duration function so you can set how long that animation is. If you click on the preview button, this will allow you to preview this animation. You can see how this gives you a nice smooth transition in here. And this rendering looks really good with a minimal amount of work from me. But one thing that's really important and that can really help you out a lot is you can actually adjust the keyframe views by clicking on them. So you can see how when I click on this keyframe view, um, you can adjust adjust the time of day for each keyframe. So if you wanted the clouds or something like that to adjust, you could do that. Um, you could also adjust the field of view for each view. So let's say for example, like this one, let's say I wanted like a tighter field of view. I could apply that to this scene, but then in my next keyframe, if I click the next button, I could adjust a wide, or I could add a wider field of view, as well as where the camera points, um, just by clicking and adjusting these sliders and these different things like that. And so once these are in here, once you've got your keyframes all done, you can just click the preview button again, and this will preview your animation. This animation is really smooth, and I had a lot of control over what was contained inside of this animation. So I like the way the animation editor works. It's very, um, so I feel like it's very intuitive. It was very easy to create my scene. Um, like before, there's actually a path in here that's kind of shown. Um, so if you want to adjust like your cameras or things like that, you can click on them um, just by flying around and clicking on those. So. Um, the animation editor, I th or the video editor, I think uh, I really like this tool and I really like what you can do with this. 
So they've made some changes to the material editor and they didn't even really talk about this, but one of the things that I like about this is now you've got a list of all the materials inside your model. So instead of having to mess around with all your materials over here, and you can still do that by the way, you can use the eyedropper to select materials and things like that, but you can also find them in the list over here. So I like that you can jump between uh, the different materials. You can also do a search in here. So like for a grass or something like that. So I like that they added this list of materials over here. The other thing they did, and I'll demo this more in a second, is they added a new material for clear coat. And the clear coat, um, it's almost like a car paint type material or a material that makes things more reflective. So it really makes things look good inside of Enscape. And so probably the best way to demonstrate that is to also talk about their other feature that I really like, which is they've taken their asset library and they've made it web-based. And so what that means is if I fly over here and we'll just set up a view kind of like this one, we'll also fly over here in our rendering. Now, if I was to bring in an asset from the Enscape asset library, so like for example, let's go in here and click on asset library. Now what this does, and it takes a little longer to load, especially on slower internet connections, is this pulls up previews of all of these different objects and they're all web-based now. So they're hosted on the web. Um, and so like for example, if I quick click on the materials, I can bring in something like this car and just drop it in here. And these all come in as Enscape proxies, which I really like as well, um, because those are not going to slow down SketchUp in the same way that like full geometry would. But let's say, let's go ahead and rotate this car. So it's kind of pointing this way. But you can see how now finding these assets and bringing them in is really easy. And it was really easy before, but I like that it's web-based. I have nothing to base this on, but I feel like if they wanted to, now they can add things to that library um, where if they lived on your computer before, that wouldn't really have worked the same way. So I like the way this looks, but now if you take a look at this rendering, these assets are built to take advantage of the new materials, like the clear coat material. So you can see how this car looks looks really good like the way that the light is reflecting off of this and all of that is really good and it really gives you a great view inside of your model so I feel like this gives you a lot of control but also a lot of great resources so let's say for example that I wanted to replace these hedge bushes because I do want to replace these hedge bushes um, if I was to come in here and we'll go ahead and delete these out I could replace these SketchUp hedges with some vegetation from inside the InScape, li Inscape library. And I can click the button right here to sort by hedges so I can bring this modular hedge in and drop it right on this point. And so we'll just center this in this little drop down, maybe make a copy of it over here and make a copy over here. And so you can see how now if I come look at these inside my rendering, these look way better than the SketchUp placeholder hedges that I had in here before. So the other thing I like about this is if you go in and you look at the vehicles that are in here, what you're going to notice is when you mouse over them, these are actually vehicle models from Evermotion, meaning that they're actually partnering with an outside group to start bringing these in, which is great because that's a really great way to get high quality models and get them brought in and optimized for SketchUp. So like this car, I, I still really like the way that it looks and I didn't have to model a car at all. I literally just had to bring in the Evermotion model and you can see how that's getting rendered and it looks super realistic. I really like this asset library based way of filling out your life uh, filling out your sketchup models especially with the proxies in here so that's where I'm going to end this video. I'm pretty happy about this release and what they put into it. Um, that's what I like about Enscape is it seems like every time they roll out a new release, they add um, several new features in here that make things uh, that make things work a lot better. So I'm excited to see where this goes in the future. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. What do you think about this release? Are you using Enscape? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.